Hey everyone, it's Deanna and welcome back to the Bookish Vineyard. I know I haven't posted in a couple of months, life's been busy, and I had decided to take a break until January 2020. That way it would give me time to edit my backlog of videos and get started on a regular posting schedule. But then Romance Landia exploded today. And this is information that actually really needs to get out, which is why I'm showing this very raw video. There's not going to be a lot of edits, intros, outros, etc. But here we go. For those of you who do not read romance, I don't know why, but for, if you don't, that's your, that's your choice. But I do want to let you know on what is going on with the largest romance writers association, because it just imploded. It's in the process of imploding right now. Alrighty, so today, December 23rd, 2019, I'm shooting this video at 11.34 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, just to give you an idea, but today Romance Writers of America submitted its findings of a complaint against a member of their ethics committee, the president of their ethics committee, Courtney Milan. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory as much as I know about it. Like I said, this is going to be a very raw video and I am going to link the information down below because the report from the committee is online. You can read it. The findings of the ethics committee is online. The complaints are online. Everything is online. I'll just link it all down below so you can review it at your leisure and come to your own conclusions. But here's a brief synopsis. Courtney and Milan was I guess now was, the head of the Ethics Committee for Romance Writers of America. She has been on the board for, I think, four years, trying to push RWA into the 21st century. They have historically had issues with shutting out marginalized authors, ignoring problematic content in books, not supporting authors when there's issues with publishers, which right now is Dream Spinner, Dream Spire, Dream Spinner, I don't know, who is refusing to pay their authors and has somehow f lost money in royalties that should be going to their authors. Anyway, that's a whole other story, but historically they've had an issue with all of these different avenues. Now, Courtney came in and has really been trying to push it to the 21st century and saying, hey, let's actually listen to marginalized authors, let's hear them, they write amazing stories, what policies are in place that are stopping them from getting the recognition that other authors are getting, and how do we deal with the problematic content that is in books that are written by white authors, essentially. But she's been a, she's been a champion of pushing diversity and inclusion in all different avenues within Romance Writers of America. In doing that, she called out a racist book. Um, I'd have to look through the documents to figure out what specific book it is, but it was a book that was written in, 1990, in the 1990s and had very racist connotations towards Asian characters. She called it out, uh, Courtney, this is, this is not the first time Courtney has called out a book as racist and problematic to different, margin, different identities. Anyway, in this instance, this kind of blew up and a RWA member, Suzanne Tisdale, I'm naming it because like I said, everything is online, all of the information is there, all of the names are there. So Suzanne Tisdale submitted a complaint against Courtney and specifically for four issues. That one, she was repeatedly or intentionally engaging in conduct injurious to RWA or its purposes. Two, repeatedly or intentionally engaging in any other acts of violent, harassing, or intimidating conduct that objectively threaten a member's career, reputation, safety, or well-being, blah, 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 blah. Um, three, board members shall not engage in or facilitate any discriminatory or harassing behavior towards RWA, RWA staff members, officers, directors, basically anyone who has anything to do with RWA. And then four, Repeatedly or intentionally making a member's personal, private, personal, private identifying information public with the intent of harming the other member's career, reputation, or well-being. 
So there are four issues that Suzanne Tisdale made the complaint against Courtney Milan. The Ethics Committee did the report on these four issues and found in favor of Courtney Milan on three of the issues. The issue of repeatedly or intentionally engaging in any other acts of violent, harassing, or intimidating con conduct, um, engaging in facilita facilitating any discriminatory or harassing behavior towards any person that deals, uh, is affiliated with RWA, and then repeatedly or intentionally making a member's personal, private, identifying information public. So th those were the three areas that the Ethics Committee found in favor of Courtney Milan. The last area, which was the engaging in conduct injurious to RWA or its purposes, they found in favor of Suzanne Tisdale. Now, specifically, the issue is with this is the fact that that first item needs the other three points to make it work. Um, it specifically, they said that her comments, uh, Courtney's comments based off the book and some of the other practices of Suzanne Tisdale and her publishing company and the people that she was associ associating with um, were creating an, uh, an unsafe or, or unsafe and not respectful environment. Um, RWA and its members are supposed to create that safe and respectable environment for its entire community, for, for its community of writers. Let me read this specifically for you. Um, the organization has an expressed purpose of creating a safe and respectful environment for its community of writers. Okay. And you would assume that would mean community of all writers. So writers who are people of color, writers who are queer, writers who are disabled, writers who are neurodiverse, writers who are anything, anything that would be a um, marginalized identity, that it would be safe for everyone. Great. But they found that based off of Courtney's comments on the racist tropes and the racist stereotypes that were in the book and other aspects of the people that Suzanne Tisdale and her publishing company were aligning with and that this was harming the business and it was creating an unsafe environment for Suzanne. Because of that, they have stated that Courtney is going to be cens censored by RWA. She's suspended from RWA membership for one year and she receives a lifetime ban on holding any position of leadership on the RWA national board or an RWA chapter board. The issue that I have with this is one, it's bullshit and it's completely bullshit. You should be able to critique a book on racist elements or not even just racist elements. You should be able to critique a book on problematic content and it not be an issue because there are books. Romance has historically had racist tropes and able, you know, ableist, ableist issues and queer issues. Like there's been multiple issues within romance books and the romance industry where books that actually support and uplift authors of color, characters of color, authors of that are neurodiverse or or have some type of disability or characters that reflect that. Um, queer characters and queer authors, they have historically been marginalized and suppressed and devalued within the organization. So calling out racist tropes and calling out problem, problematic authors or problematic authors, problematic books, or problematic buying practices and editorial practices should be done because that's how we grow as a people. That's how we get to the 21st century and actually get to a place where you can have a safe environment for the entire community of writers. The other issue I have with this is, I'm pulling up the complaint right now, Susan's complaint. Like I said, all of this information is online um, and so you can read it for yourself. But in the complaint, let me find it, here we go. 
It specifically says, I'm just going to quote this, I find it very difficult to understand how Miss Milan could be the chair of the RWA Ethics Committee when she continually and repeatedly behaves in this manner and launches disgusting attacks against other authors and other RWA members. And um, the, what she's saying with the repeated behavior is going on, going on Twitter and calling out authors that authors or books that have problematic or racist content. Back to the quote. This is akin to putting a neo-Nazi in charge of a UN Human Rights Committee. Okay, so this is, it, it's not, it is not. One, why, why are you trying to evoke the imagery of the Holocaust and Nazism and neo-Nazi in this very specific instance. This has the this has nothing to do with that. Courtney Milan is not saying never write a book again. You should be put in. You should be exiled from romance world. She's not doing anything of anything anything that would even be considered Nazi behavior or neo-Nazi behavior. So then to have this in your complaint, in your complaint that this is akin to putting a neo-Nazi in charge of a UN Human Rights Committee. It's fucked up. It just is. And I, I, I started reading it, I stopped there, and I had to exit out. This is not okay. It's not. Um, like I said, all of the information, all of the documents will be linked below. You can go read them at your leisure, but just to kind of wrap this up, and the reason why this is very pertinent right now is one, romance is a huge industry, and the fact that there has been historical, historical problems with Romance Writers of America, and the way that authors of color and queer authors and authors who are disabled or authors who are neurodiverse and the books that they write about the characters that are own voices that are not getting the support. There have been numerous instances of authors coming to Romance Writers of America saying, hey, these members are being homophobic or racist or whatever it is, and they're filing a complaint and Romance Writers of America has done nothing. There is a huge, like I, when I started this, this video, there's a huge issue going on right now, Dream Spinner Press, where they have mismanaged their funds and there are hundreds of authors who have not been paid for quarter two or quarter three. There's thousands of dollars. There are authors who are owed over $40,000 from Dream Spinner Press and RWA has been silent for months on this issue. Months as romance authors are being shafted their money. So for to do all of that and be silent on all of these other issues, and then to get on stage at the, at the RWA convention in August and say, you know what, we're pushing forward, we know, we have a, we know we've had an issue with diversity, but we're, moving, we're working towards moving past that, where we've already started and it's just gonna keep moving forward, that's great. The, 2019 being the first time in, I think, 36, 37, 38 years that someone non-white has won a Rita is a problem. And it's just, it's, it's a whole bunch of fucking lip service. It is. Because you're going to sanction the board member, not the only one, but the one of the most vocal board members that's pushing for inclusion and diversity and is calling out the problems that are in romance books and problems that are in the romance genre. And you're gonna sanction them and say, well, sucks to be you, peace out, bye. And then the other issue with all of this is the fact that December 23rd was the last day to get your entries in for to be judged for the readers. Now, for those of you who do not know, authors have to pay Romance Writers of America to review their book as part of the Rita Awards. The only way that they can get into the pool of applicants is to pay. So they closed that out at 5 p.m. 
you had to get in by 5 p.m. anything after that wasn't gonna be taken and most likely non-refundable so they do that at 5 I think it was like 7 o'clock I don't know I was out and I got back about 9 o'clock and I had I went on Twitter and I saw that this had, it blew up so at 5 o'clock you close that out and you've now gotten all of that money 7, 8, 9 o'clock ish somewhere in there it gets out that you have now sanctioned Courtney Milan and there and then you're closed you're closed for the next two days because it's Christmas so you're closed the 24th and 25th which is fine because you already have that plan but it's very suspect that today was the day that not even today this evening this evening after the offices are closed after the Rita entries are all submitted that it's now now that you decided to let Courtney know oh hey by the way we're not going to need you anymore you're kicked off and you're banned from ever serving on a board again after you've put in four years of your time for free I assume actually I, I don't know if they, I don't know if they get paid or if it's for free I assume it's free most most boards are free but um so most likely free labor and you're gonna do it two days before Christmas when if you knew if you knew you were already going to take the ethic com, ethics committee's recommendation that she be sanctioned and all these other things if the board already knew that and they had already made that decision it could have waited two days it could have waited till Thursday when they had opened again it could have waited till the first of the year because not a lot of stuff is going on right now most people in the United States are going to be dealing with Christmas and family and holidays etc and so forth not much is going to be done so it could have waited until January 1st but they decided to do it at a very suspect time and I can only assume it's because I don't know what they thought people would forget over the two days that it would blow up and then go away except it had like it's not it's not going to go away I hashtag I stand with Courtney is trending on Twitter I've seen numerous authors some that I were already following and then I'm seeing the retweets but I've seen numerous authors that are emailing RWA to cancel their membership um, I've seen numerous authors that are pulling out of judging the Rita's this year I've seen numerous authors that are pulling their entries for the Rita I've seen numerous authors that are contacting RWA to return their readers because they're like I'm not I'm done I don't want this award anymore if you're gonna do this so it's huge the backlash is insane there are so many authors that I'm seeing that are like I've been going I've been a member for 15 years I'm canceling I'm getting on and canceling right now I'm never attending a um, conference again I'm not judging I'm not submitting anything I'm done with them because this is a pattern of ignoring issues and punishing the people that are actually doing the work so yeah just this is what's going on like I said the links are below you can take a look at it but I stand with Courtney and I'm ready to see what comes out of this because there are people that are already actively working on creating something that is better that has nothing to do with RWA anyway thank you all for listening have a good holiday whatever your holiday is if you do celebrate something if not have a good rest of 2020 and I will see you bright-eyed and bushy-tailed in January 2020 oh actually the first is on a Wednesday isn't it I mean, yes the first is on a Wednesday so I will see you on January 1st with another episode of hump day reads bye